Hi everyone and welcome to Math Sucks. This video is going to help you pass the Geometry Common Core Regents. We're doing this one question at a time. Here is question 25. In triangle ABC below, angle C is 90 degrees, AC is 11, and AB is 18. Determine and state the measure of angle A to the nearest degree. So we're looking for angle A up here. And since this is a right angle, this is going to be a Sokotoa problem. So in relation to angle A, we have the adjacent and we have the hypotenuse value. So adjacent and hypotenuse, so we know we're going to be using cosine. So cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent 11 over the hypotenuse 18. So to get this kind of answer when we don't know the angle, what we're going to do is plug this into our calculator, cosine to the negative one of 11 over 18. Well, let's do that. Second cosine and then 11 divided by 18. So we're going to get this long number, but remember they wanted it to the nearest degree. So we're just going to round down and leave this at 52 degrees. And that's our answer. I also have a bunch of trig questions just like this. Uh, so please check that out. Question 26. Using a compass and straight edge to construct an equilateral triangle inscribed in a circle A below. So for this, we're going to use a ruler and a compass. And the first thing I'm going to want to do is measure out the radius of this circle. So we bring the point to that middle point A, measure out the radius. And this is going to be like our tool to measure out along the circle. So we're going to just choose a random point and just make little arcs along the circle. So here we have a mark and then we're going to bring the point to that mark and then make another mark and just go all the way around. Until you see where we're at where we started. So now uh, what we're gonna do for this equal, since it's an equilateral triangle, now we have all these equidistant arcs. We're gonna mark down uh, every other arc on here. So here, skip one, make a point, skip one, make a point. And then we're just gonna connect these three points together and it'll form our equilateral triangle. And that's it. Yes, yeah, so this was a nice and easy construction. There are so many different constructions to remember. I happen to have a playlist full of a ton of them, so please check that out. Question 27. Quadrilateral deer and its image quadrilateral D prime, E prime, A prime, R prime are graphed on the set of axes below. So if you look at this graph, we're starting with this quadrilateral there and then it's becoming this over here. So here's like one and then here's two. So we're going this way. Describe a sequence of transformations that maps quadrilateral deer onto quadrilateral D prime, E prime, A prime, R prime. So like how do we, the question here is like how do we go from this to this? What did we do? So right away I could see that we did a uh, reflection over the Y axis. So, cause if you look at this shape, it looks like a flipped image of this shape. And then it looks like it was moved over a little bit. So the first thing I'm gonna say is reflection over Y axis. And you don't have to do this on the test, but if it helps you, uh, it doesn't hurt. So I'm gonna actually reflect this shape over the Y axis to see what we did next here. So to me, it looks like a translation, but let's uh, graph it. So notice D is actually gonna Stay the same and then R. And to reflect on the y axis, notice I'm just counting the distance from the y axis and then placing that point. So, like E is five units away from the y axis, so we're going to do five units away on the, uh, on the y axis on the other side. And then we could just connect our points. So, this is our shape once it's reflected, which looks like it's the shape below, but now we need to translate this shape, right? We're just like bringing it down and over. So let's translate. So let's see how many units we have to go. So if, if, um, if R is over here, let's see how many units we get to R prime. And you could choose any point. You could choose D. Yeah. Okay. So I'm choosing R. So if you look at how we end up down here to get to R prime, we go over one, two. So for X, we're gonna be going 
adding two units, going to the right two units. And then for Y, we're going to be going down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is going to give us Y minus seven units. And that's our answer. That's all we need to put for this question. Reflection over the Y axis and then translating down seven units and to the right two units. I also have a playlist on all the different transformations, so please check that out. Question 28. In circle P below, tangent AL and secant AKE are drawn. If AK is 12, so I'm just going to fill this in, and KE is 36, determine and state the length of AL. So we want to find that. So what we're going to use here is something called the tangent secant theorem. So based on this question, what the tangent secant theorem states is that we're going to take AL, this thing we're trying to find, and square it. So I'm just going to draw what we're doing. So we're taking AL over here, squaring it, and then setting it equal to AK, which you can see is 12, times AE, so times this whole thing. So we're doing like this little part that's on the outside times the entire thing, so AE. So that's why we're color coding this, so we could clearly see what we're doing times that whole thing. So not this 36, but it's gonna, this whole thing is gonna be 12 plus 36, which is equal to 48. So okay, so now we could just fill it in, now that we know this tangent secant theorem. So we have x squared, which we're trying to find, AL, is equal to AK, which is 12, times AE, the whole thing, which is 48. So if you plug this into your calculator, you're gonna get that this is equal to 576. Take the square root of both sides to find X, and we're gonna get 24. So the length of AL is 24. And that's our answer. I also have a playlist on all the different circle theorems and a video on tangent secant theorems for practice questions, so check that out. Question 29. The equation of a circle is x squared plus y squared plus 8x minus 6y plus 7 equals 0. Determine and state the coordinates of the center and the length of the radius of the circle. So with this, we're going to be completing the square and then finding the center and the radius. We're going to complete the square two times. So the first thing I'm going to want to do when looking at this is get the x values together and the y values together. So we have x squared and an 8x plus y squared and this is minus 6y. And then I'm just going to move this 7 to the other side, and it's going to become minus 7. So let's focus over here first, and let's do uh, completing this square. So to complete the square, there's a lot of weird little steps to remember. Um, so what we're going to do is actually divide uh, 8 divided by 2, and then square it. So we're always taking that uh, b value coefficient dividing it by 2 and then squaring it so we get 16 and that's what we're going to add on to this equation so we're going to be adding on two numbers now let's focus on this guy over here the y values we're going to get y squared minus 6y now we're going to do the same thing with negative 6 divided by 2 is going to give us minus 3 and then we're going to square it which will give us 9 so we're going to add this number 9 over here and then everything that we added on that kind of doesn't make any sense is what we're going to add on to the other side of the equation. So we have negative 7, which we had before, and now we're going to add on these numbers that I boxed off, plus 16 and plus 9. And the reason we do all these weird little steps is so that it can be rewritten as a perfect square. Now this entire thing, x squared plus 8x plus 16, we can rewrite as a perfect square which is what we want to do. So the, to rewrite as a perfect square, we're going to take this value, what we originally got was to be divided by 2, x plus 4 squared plus, and then do it with y, the same thing, y minus 3 squared. And then when you add these together, negative 7 plus 16 plus 9, we're going to get 18. So now that we have completed the square, we can find the center and radius. So the center is always going to be the numbers here, but we're going to do the opposite. So here's a positive 4, so this is going to be a minus 4, and then here's a minus 3, so this is going to be a positive 3, so our center is negative 4, 3, and then the radius is always going to be the square root 
of what's on the right to the of the equal sign. So this is going to be radical 18. And that's our answer. Question 30. On the set of axes below, triangle ABC is drawn with vertices that have coordinates 2, negative 3, 4, 5, and negative 5, 1. Determine and state the area of triangle BC. So there's different ways to do this. I'm going to do the method of drawing a rectangle around this and then subtracting different areas of the different triangles that will form. So if that doesn't make any sense, uh, don't worry. We'll go over each step. So first thing I'm going to want to do is draw a rectangle So the, re the area of the, of the pink rectangle we just made is just going to be the length times the height, right? So the length and the height, we could just count with the units. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. This is 9 units. And then this side, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 units. So this is just going to be 9 times 8, which is 72. Now I'm going to label these uh, triangles these outside triangles, uh, triangle one, two, and three. And then I'm gonna figure out what the areas are and then subtract them from that rectangle we found. So the area of triangle one is gonna be one half base times height, right? So one half base times height is gonna be one half times the base we found is nine. And notice the height is four, four units. This is going to give us 18. Now let's find triangle two over here, the skinny one, one half base times height. So we could see base is two and the height is eight, which will just give us eight. And now let's find the area of our last triangle, triangle three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is one half times seven. And then let's see, one, two, three, four times four. And this is going to give us 14. So now all I need to do is take 72 and subtract all these areas. So we want to subtract 18 plus 8 plus 14. And when you plug that into your calculator, you'll get 32, which is our answer. Question 31. In the diagram below, AE equals 15, EB is 27, AF is 20, and FC is 36. So they give this triangle for us and they put out all the numbers that they were telling us already. Explain why EF is parallel to BC. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is get a better picture of both of these triangles. So there's the big triangle ABC and in between here we can add these together, right? 20 plus 36 will give us 56 and 27 plus 15 will give us 42. And then we have this smaller triangle, triangle AEF, where the side is 15 and 20. So what it looks like is that this, these triangles are gonna be similar to each other. So they both have an angle A, and then they give us these values, and then let's see officially if they are similar by setting up a proportion and making sure they make sense. So if we do 42, over the corresponding side of the smaller triangle, which is 15, and set it equal to the base of the first triangle over the base of the second triangle. So what we can do here is make sure that these two fractions are equal to each other. So 42 divided by 15, we get 2.8, and then 56 over 20, we also get 2.8. So because these are in proportion to each other and they share this angle A, um, we get these two triangles being similar to each other by side angle side. This will eventually prove that write out the first part of this kind of mini proof we have here. So I'm gonna start writing it down here. They must be similar by side angle side because we have the sides that are in proportion, which we checked here, and then they share this angle A. So we know that they're similar. And then because of that, 
the angles are going to be equal to each other. They're going to be congruent to each other because now that we know that they're in proportion and they're similar, they're actually going to have equal angles, congruent angles. So we had no angle A is congruent to angle A, but we can actually say that angle C is congruent to angle F. And we could also say angle E is congruent to angle B. That we could say corresponding angles of similar triangles are congruent. So we know that angle B is congruent to angle AEF and angle C is congruent to angle EFA. And we know this because corresponding angles of similar triangles are congruent. Notice if we go back at this picture, we can say that EF is parallel to BC because of these angle relationships. Since these angles, angle F and angle C and angle E and B, are, they're considered corresponding congruent angles and they prove that EF is parallel to BC. So that's our answer. Another thing you could have said, instead of doing this entire proof, you could have talked about the side splitter theorem. So that is the end of part two. Look out for part three coming out soon. Need more practice? Check out mathsucks.org for more questions. Link below. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Happy calculating!